my name's David Woolcock, um, I'm a member of the Aston Martin racing team and I'm the race engineer for 009. Yeah, it's uh, GT1 rules, um, it's based on the, 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 the standard road car and GT1 is, is quite free um, in, in terms of what's, in terms of the regulations and what can be changed. Um, it's it's easy, easy to say what's actually retained as opposed to um, what's allowed. So uh, basically the, as, in terms of the engine, um, the cylinder heads and the cylinder blocks have to remain standard um, and for the, the, it has to, the, the body shell has to remain standard but um, alterations are allowed. Basically uh, the GT1 rules is you're allowed a, a lightweight body, a lightweight um, Body shell, or it's a lightweight formula. So all the all the all the panels are replaced from original to uh, carbon fibre. Um, you're allowed um, a, a, a wider um, a wider chassis um, to account for the for the the, the larger tyre sizes, um, and obviously that's influenced by the aerodynamics. Basically. Uh, because of the wide track, you have a wide body. The flaring of the wide body to the um, uh, to the to the original body shell has to sort of still retain the resemblance of the DB9. Um, and obviously, there's a it's an aero formula, so there are uh, we have aerodynamic devices on the vehicle which um, within within limitations. The fundamentals of it is um, is, a, is a front splitter, which is this this, this device here. Um, and the rear wing, which is quite obvious um, uh, over over the rear there. That uh, what, what we're looking for is just um, is, is, is is negative lift. So these aerodynamic devices are are tuned for the body shape um, to achieve an efficient level of downforce. What you're looking is downforce with minimal drag, and um, it's the L over D that you're always trying to maximise. The modern day developments in, 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 in computers has, um, has moved on a lot and this, was the, this is one of the first sort of closed wheel cars that the majority of the chassis has been designed, um, for the aerodynamic purpose anyway, with um, using CFD which is computational fluid dynamics and it's, um, it's the, 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 the fluid flow over the body is, is measured and, and tuned to, to supply the, an, an, uh, an efficient method of achieving downforce. And, this, and the DBR9 is no exception. This is, for us as, as a Aston Martin Racing, is our first car that we, we uh, went into great detail in trying to achieve an, uh, an, an efficient aero package. Okay, yeah. Unfortunately, the, the sound is, um, is, is not as impressive as it used to be with sort of with everything going green these days, we all have to run silenced. So there's a there's a, a noise limit of uh, 113 decibels, uh, which is um, limits, which which now means all these cars have to run silencers. So it's not quite so impressive. But yeah, it's a six liter V12. The gearbox is in the back, um, transaxle um, layout. Depending on the the, the number of valves. Um, and the, and the capacity of the engine. You have to run, uh, it's a restricted formula, therefore we have restrictors mounted here. Um, we, we, we have two of them and uh, it's, a, it's a control diameter that the engine has to breathe through. So in terms of, um, it's, it's maximizing the airflow through the motor, um, it, you go about it in a slightly different way. So it's, it's a reason, they, don't, they rev to sort of six, seven, fifty. One of the rules in, um, in GT1 is uh, the suspension type has to remain the same. So the Aston Martin um, DB, uh, DB9 is um, it's a double wishbone front and rear suspension layout. Um, if, you take a look at, if we take a look at it, although you are allowed to change the, uh, the hard points or the, 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 the node positions, um, the, the, the basic concept has to remain the same. So um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a simple method really, it's a five link system, steel, steel wishbones. Um, which, with an uh, aluminium upright. Um, the brakes are um, Brembo carbon fibre um, material. It's a, it's, a, it's a lightweight with high mu, and um, and it's, a, it's an extremely good um, it's an extremely good braking system on, on, on this car. It's um, we don't have to change brakes throughout the race. It's uh, it's it's uh, efficiency is really good. Yeah, there are a lot of systems. You probably would find them on the road car, but they're sort of buried deep away inside where you don't really see them. Where the, on, on this car, it's a little bit more transparent and adjustable. Um, 
but in general general concept is it's a safety cell for the driver it's uh, it's it has to be um, structurally integral in saying that um, it's also for driver comfort the, the guys all the, you know the drivers sort of double stint these cars and they can be in the, they can be in the car anything between two to three hours on occasion so it's also um, we, we do we do we do pay particular interest for, for driver comfort and one of the biggest changes over the last year or two is the um, addition of air conditioning um, which is this system you see here um, it's, it's a conventional um, air conditioning system you'll find in any road car the the regulation is the cockpit's not allowed to exceed 32 degrees yeah it's how you operate that system so it's most efficient so it's quite an intelligent system that we've got on the Aston and the drivers love it basically the top row um, we have a, a traction control which for various levels for fully driver adjustable um, we have electronic power steering on this car so um, basically it's just pure gain that, uh, to, to increase the power assistance um, and we have an engine trim, a number of engine maps just for sort of safety modes um, and overrides um, should uh, normally the um, electronic control unit um, uh, is programmed to control all, most of the systems for the engine electronics um, however sometimes if they fail we do have overrides and then we have a row the second row down is is, is uh, the, the 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 main items for the driver it should it should it be wet so basically we have indicators we have the wipers the driver fan the rain light and the heated front screen so that's that's sort of wet conditions um, and then this the third row is the main row for the ignition start headlights always have to be on in this in the gt1 formula um, and various other elect, um, electric mirrors because when you're running different size drivers um, you, you need electric door mirrors so they can adjust because with um, the speed differential between prototypes and GT2 cars uh, relative to the GT1 is, is considerable and, um, and vision is really important. And then for the, for the fuses, um, they're, just, they're just safety safety for all the various circuits but we have a row of fuel pumps, we have a row of lights and then a, a number of auxiliaries. Um, uh, but down there also and then the bottom row is, is more sort of safety so we have a fire extinguisher a couple of other overrides etc and then a block of relays on the on the lower row yeah this is a, a, a lightweight gear lever it's a sequential change um, shift pattern so uh, the driver just pulls back there's a, there's six, um, it's a six speed uh, dog box um, with a with an electronic gear cut, it's quite quite common these days. Okay, um, I'd like to thank you for this uh, for this um, trip around the Aston Martin. I hope you found it informative. Uh, I'm enjoying doing it, um, and I hope you enjoy the race. Thank you.